Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it is a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. We want to help you change your life today if you're dealing with some kind of health challenge and you just don't know where to turn, what to do. You don't understand how it works. That's what we're about on this program is helping people explain how the disease process ensues, how the breakdown process proceeds, what breakdown is really about. The medical model is obsessed with diagnoses and names. This is a program where we talk about how the body breaks down and also how to reverse the breakdown process. Disease is a verb. We don't have diseases. We are disease-ing. Nobody has diabetes. We are diabetes-ing. Our our diseases so-called are really the manifestation of the body breaking down. And all we need to do is figure out how to reverse that, how to take it from breakdown to buildup. It's kind of like the body's a business. In a business, you're either in the red or you're in the black. You're always spending money and losing money in your business, but at the end of the day, it's the bottom line that counts. The bottom line is either net negative or net positive. You're either in the red or in the black. If our body, our our body's like a business, and if our business body is in a diseasing state, it simply means we are in the red. We simply have to figure out how to get less toxicity, that is spend less money, and uh, put more energy into the system, put more cash into the system, that is put more nutrition in. Out with the, uh, out with the bad stuff, in with the good stuff. All diseasing is about the wrong stuff getting in, or at least too much of the wrong stuff getting in, and not enough of the right stuff getting in, and it really is as simple as that, folks. If you're dealing with a health challenge, especially if you're dealing with a health challenge that you have a really having a really hard time with, or you have a client who's having health challenges, having a really hard time with, please give us a call, 844-236-6010. We can help you. If you have questions about the Longevity products, Longevity business, Longevity formulations, we can help you there as well. Ingredients that you may have heard about, read about, if you want to contribute to the conversation, or if you just have a success story to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Our Truth Retinol 5% gel made with retinol as well as vitamin C, your two go-to active ingredients for anti-aging the skin, for healing the skin, for reducing the appearance of dark spots, age spots, fine lines, wrinkles. There is nothing like vitamin C and vitamin A. There's no active ingredients. There's no ingredients, period. End of story. No matter what Cindy Crawford tells you, no matter what Dr. Safak tells you, no matter what you hear on TV from your famous doctors and movie stars, vitamin C and vitamin A. That's it, folks. Of course, they do have to be in the right form, and they do have to be in the right amounts, the right concentrations. And that's what our retinol 5% gel is about. That's what our all our truth treatment products are about. That's why our Truth Transdermal C Serum was voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar magazine. Truth Transdermal C Serum, as well as Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel are all available at truthtreatments.com. Free shipping for the month of December. And we now have a Truth Balm trial size available to go with our Truth Balm, or our Truth Serum trial size. Okay, welcome back to the bright side. We're talking fluoride. Fluoride, the industrial waste product that 
municipalities and cities and government authorities and well-meaning dentists believe is so good for us that it should be put in the water supply, that we should all be drinking it all day long. Given the fact that fluoride is inarguably toxic and very, very toxic, nobody disputes that point, it's very toxic, plus the fact that we're all ingesting regular unknown amounts of the stuff, we're drinking it every day, we're eating it every day, nobody really knows how much we're getting, and given the fact that it is definitely toxic, it's hard to believe that fluoride does not have, ingestion of fluoride does not have at least a little role to play in the abysmal state of the health of the average American. It could, you know, it, it could be that fluoride is a much bigger problem than anybody knows or thinks, and it could be that a large part of our uh, disastrous health challenge or health condition that we're, that we're living with in this country and that uh, cities around the world are living with has to do with fluoride. We know the stuff is toxic. It's not just merely some magical dental health tooth strengthening miracle. It's an industrial chemical. It's a byproduct of the production of iron and steel and plastics and gasoline and lead, among other things, among other nasty toxin, toxic substance, phosphates. For example, it's used in the production of pesticides and fertilizers and military weapons, and chemical weapons. And despite government claims to the contrary, even small amounts of fluoride are poisonous. And in fact, fluoride is one of the most toxic and most deadly of all the elements on the periodic table. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, fluoride in the atmosphere has, quote, caused more damage to domestic animals than any other air pollutant, unquote. That's the U.S. Department of Agriculture, folks. Now, fluoride, as toxic as, as it is, it is a natural component of the Earth's crust. It's, it's, only in the, it's only found in the tiniest amounts in the Earth's crust, but it's there. It's a natural compound. According to Wikipedia, it's the 13th most abundant element. There's more fluoride. That's not a lot. It's, it's there in trace amounts, but there's more fluoride in the, or fluorine in the crust. Uh, in the Earth's crust than sulfur, than iodine, than chromium. There's more fluoride than fluorine than copper and zinc. Fluoride and fluorine are essentially the same thing, by the way. A trace element of fluoride is definitely important for a healthy body. It's pretty much in all foods. Pretty much everything you eat is going to have some fluoride in it. it is, the stuff is ubiquitous. <clears throat> Excuse me. According to, the, according to the FDA, it is an essential mineral nutrient. It's a building element. It's a repair substance. It has anabolic, that is, building properties. Deficiencies in fluoride are associated in animals and laboratories. It's hard to find deficiencies in people. There's really no fluoride deficiencies because the stuff is everywhere. But when they do it in a controlled setting, in a laboratory setting, they remove fluoride out of the diet, it's linked to a slowdown or a depression in the growth of animals. It's a growth substance. It's an anabolic substance. It's found everywhere, soils, water, plants, animals. We don't, there's no such thing as a fluoride deficiency. But when they take it out of the, the, uh, uh, the diet of laboratory animals, you get a dramatic suppression of growth, you get a weakening of teeth, you get a weakening of bones. Now, it is an industrial pollutant. I'm not saying that fluoride, fluoride you know, sometimes these things are a little bit, it's not cut and dry, a little bit you need. It's an essential nutrient. But the, the amount that we're getting in our water is ridiculous. And it's an industrial pollutant. This stuff is spewed everywhere. Hundreds of thousands of tons are spewed out into the atmosphere every year. And we've known that fluoride emissions uh, are a big industrial contaminant, uh, a pollutant problem for 150 years. Yes, it's found in only the tiniest of quantities in the Earth's crust. But beginning in the uh, middle of the 19th century, it began to be mined from lower levels of the Earth's crust. They noticed that fluoride, when it was added to other metals, it actually helped, thing, it, it helped uh, other metals flow more readily. It made, them more easy, it made them easier to work with. Actually, they've known about this for a long time. The word fluoride comes from fluor, F-L-U-E-R. It's a Latin word which means to flow. That's where we get the word influence, fluency, influenza. Influenza, the flu, presumably refers to the fact that mucus flows out of our nose when we have the flu. So we've known about the benefits, the industrial benefits for fluoride for 150, 160 years, and that's also when we knew about how deadly toxic this stuff was. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Okay, we're back 
on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about uh, fluoride or the thyroid or anything we're speaking about here today, if you have a common or success story you'd like to share, or if you have a uh, problem patient, or if you have a health challenge that you want help dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also purchase longevity products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team by calling the phone team at 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470. For one time $25 fee, you can be in business. You can earn thank you checks associated with having your own business. Earn tax write-offs associated with having your own business. Make your own hours. Work out of your home. It's a great, great business opportunity, especially if you're an entrepreneur or entrepreneurially minded. We can help you build your business. I can help you build your business. And it's a great way to make money by helping people, by changing the world with, with good nutrition. You know, those you guys listening to this program, you need to understand that you're, you're the top 1% of folks out there when it comes to understanding how the body works or nu- nutrition. It may seem like you, if you're listening to this program, oh, wow, you don't really know as much as you should or as you could about how the body works. But compared to most people, if you're listening to this program, you know a lot more than they do. You know, most people have zero clue about how important and pow- how powerful a nutritional supplement can be. Once they get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, most, once, once most folks get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, if they haven't supplemented or they're not hip to the idea of supplementation, and they get on the BTT, especially any, any of our supplements, any of the longevity supplements, but especially the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, it's like, holy cow. Blood pressure drops and weight, uh, the, pounds get, uh, the pounds drop and people feel better and have more energy, start to wean themselves off their drugs. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this occur. More times than I can count. I don't even pay attention. I mean, I pay attention, but I don't even really record it anymore because it's, it's just this happened so many times. The stories, the testimonials are absolutely amazing. And it's not, it's because how, it's how the body works. There's nothing magical about it. It's how the body works. You put the good stuff in, take the bad stuff out, and the body responds. And we got a business. Longevity has a business that's dedicating to, dedicated to helping people understand this and to providing products that leverage these ideas. If you're interested and you're an entrepreneur, please call 866-735-2470. Or even if you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneurially minded, you'll like the idea of working, for, working for your, uh, by, on your own, being your own boss. Call 866-735-2470 for more info. Okay. Continuing on with fluoride. Fluoride, nasty stuff. Nobody, nobody disputes that it's nasty, nasty stuff. The only question is, is it worth putting it in the water? That's the only question. We all know it's nasty. By the beginning, by the beginning of the 20th century, we started, we started mining it. And really, mining of fluoride started to get going in the middle of the 19th century. By the beginning of the 20th century, the amount of fluoride that was being spewed out was becoming a serious, serious health issue. It was becoming so serious that governments were being forced to enact regulations. Now, keep in mind, in the United States, at the beginning of the 20th century, this was the age of the robber barons, there weren't a lot of regulations in place. The government was basically laissez-faire. They weren't doing anything to control any industry. And so this whole thing with fluoride was one of the first times that the government actually had to step in and do something. It was a serious, serious problem, not just in this country, but around the world. Fluoride was responsible for the first great industrial pollution disaster, the first huge pollution disaster of the industrial age. It was 1933 in Belgium. Thousands of people became violently ill when there was an explosion at some fluoride plant somewhere. And by that time, by the 1930s, there was no way that governments could deny the fact that fluoride, which was being released into the environment by that time, probably in the uh, tens of thousands of tons every year, there was no way that governments could deny that this was not a good thing and it was a serious problem. Now, it had always been known since uh, the beginning of the 19th century when they really started to do organic chemistry experiments and started to experiment with minerals. They, they knew that fluoride was stored in the hard tissues of the body. They knew that one of the most obvious signs of fluoride toxicity was something called mottled teeth. Modeling of the teeth is when they get these little flecks of, of yellow, little brown spots and yellow spots in the teeth. Basically, it destroys the teeth. It's called dental fluorosis. It does the same thing to the skeleton. Called dent, uh, uh, it's called skeletal fluorosis. 
so in the 1920s, the, uh, the United States Public Health Service, they were, they were interested, to s they wanted to see what the impact of fluoride toxicity was. They wanted to quantify fluoride toxicity, so they sent some researchers out to uh, towns in the, uh, in, the mi in the western part, in the frontier, I think with Montana and North Dakota, they sent researchers out to, uh, to see what would happen if they put fluoride in the water, what would happen to the teeth. And what they found was, they found something very interesting. They found that when large amounts of fluoride uh, I don't know if they put it in the water, actually. I think they were just exposed to fluoride in the environment. But in any case, uh, the U.S. Public, Her Public Health Service started to check people who had been exposed to fluoride one way or another. They found that their teeth were being discolored, and their teeth were definitely eroding and mottled. But interestingly, some of these people had fewer cavities. So while fluoride was causing this problem with rotting teeth, it was actually, at least in these, the few people that they tested, or a few groups that they tested, it were, they were, some of them had fewer cavities. And the fluoride industry, when they heard this, they just went ballistic. They loved this. And they turned these, the, these studies, these uh, experiments, or this research, into one of the great PR scams of the century, one of the greatest PR scams of all time, and they began a push not only to stop, not only to, to try to eliminate the uh, removal uh, or, or at least cease the, uh, the push to remove it from the water supply. That's what they were, they were focused on. Like, hey, hey, listen, we can keep it in the water supply. It's not that big a deal. We can keep it out there in the air. We don't have to worry about it. It's not that big a deal. They went from, from trying to prevent the government from enacting regulations to actually being proactive with it and telling the government they should be putting it in the water to actually be putting in the water for, um, to strengthen the teeth, to make the teeth let more cavity resistant. Now, this, this is by, like, we're talking here the 1930s and 1940s. The most important fluoride producer was a big aluminum company called Alcoa. Fluoride is a byproduct of aluminum processing. And aluminum production in the 1940s was super big because it was just beginning to be mined with great facility. They, were, they had all these fancy schmancy high-tech mining techniques for getting aluminum out of the ground. And aluminum is super lightweight, and it had military applications, and they were using it for World War II. So they were producing a lot of fluoride, and they had to have a way of getting rid of the fluoride. And by the 1940s and 1950s, there were now hundreds of legal actions and court cases that were being filed against aluminum producers, uh, as well as plastic producers and industrial chemical producers, for fluoride toxicity. The most famous one was a case, uh, Martin versus Reynolds, uh, Reynolds Metals. Reynolds Wrap is the, you know, Reynolds Wrap, the aluminum company Reynolds. Famous case, uh, Martin versus Reynolds, Reynolds Metals. In 1955, uh, this Oregon couple, the Martins, sustained, quote, serious injury to their livers, kidneys, and digestive function, unquote, this is according to a federal court ruling, from eating fluoride polluted farm produce, and they got a lot of money for it. So now it's starting to cost the aluminum industry money. They're getting sued a lot. So there's problems, and they got all this fluoride they're producing. What are they going to do? They're producing this deadly toxin. They're being sued, producing it by hundreds of tons, hundreds of thousands of tons a year. They don't know, where are they going to put this stuff? They can't put it in the ground. They couldn't put it in the water. Or could they? Well, they, yes, that's exactly what they did. They dumped it in the water supply. And it, it, the story of how this came about is so evil and so twisted. We'll talk about, we'll talk about that on our next Brightside episode. We'll get your calls in our next segment. 844-236-6010 is our number. Bye. We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. And we do have lines open for you. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you here in just a moment. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about fluoride or fluoride toxicity or the thyroid, which is how we started talking about fluoride, electrolytes, the longevity products, anything we're speaking about here today, or of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. And we're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. I have search engines up on both websites as well as Longevity Products and a click on link for joining the longevity, uh, for joining the Brightside Ben team and starting a longevity business at brightsideben.com, pharmacist, pharmacistben.com, also criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, let's see here. 
844-236-6010 is our number. Get to your calls here in just a sec, so hang on. This is from the journal The Conversation. Yoga in the workplace can reduce back pain and sickness absence. Yoga, which by the way comes from the Latin or from the Sanskrit word yoke to connect. Kind of yoga most of us think about. We think about yoga as physical yoga, body yoga, but there's there's all kinds of yogas. There's all kinds of ways to connect. To connect presumably means to connect to God or to connect to spirit. And there's various types of yogas. I actually did a blog post. On, it's up at criticalhealthnews.com on one type of yoga. But there, there's many types of yoga. There's yoga of the mind. They call Raja yoga. There's yoga of devotion. They call, there's yoga of the material, physical world. There's all kinds of ways to connect to God. Yoga that we most of us know about is physical yoga. And back in the day, 5,000, 4,000 years ago, they actually thought and they knew that by holding their body in certain positions, they could somehow connect to spirituality more efficiently or more effectively. These days, yoga, physical yoga, can be used to help reduce back pain and uh, uh, make you to become more for us to become more flexible. I notice that as I get older, I used to be a big time weightlifter and I still do lift weights, but. I notice that as I get older, it's more important for me to stretch, and I haven't really motivated to take a yoga class, but I'm certainly thinking about it. Anyway, this is from the journal The Conversation. Yoga in the workplace can reduce back pain and sickness in uh, and work sickness. After eight weeks, results uh, on, that were done on a study on 150 NHS employees. I don't know what NHS means. Where's the NHS? This is a UK study. Anyway. Uh, after eight weeks, the results show that most yoga participants had larger reductions in back pain compared to the control group. After six months, employee staff records show that yoga participants had 20 times less sick leave due to musculoskeletal conditions. All right, let's see here. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's do one more and then we'll get your calls here. How physical exercise prevents dementia. Turns out that physical exercise modifies certain brain chemicals. Certain brain chemicals change, particularly a brain chemical called choline becomes more stabilized under conditions of physical exercise. Speaking of dementia, did you guys hear Donald Trump slurring his words yesterday? If you haven't heard it, Google it. Donald Trump slurring his words. Not a good thing. They're trying to say it's dentures, not dentures. They're trying to say it's, he doesn't wear dentures. And they're trying to say it's dry, dry throat. I don't want to get all political here, but they're lying. There ain't no way dry throat causes you to slur your words. So some people are speculating it's dementia. I don't know necessarily that it would be dementia, but it could certainly have to do with eating all that McDonald's. It could certainly have to do with not exercising. I don't know if it's a good idea to have a 71-year-old president who eats 4,000 McDon calories from McDonald's every day and doesn't exercise. That would have a lot more to do with slurring your speech than... Uh, uh, than dentures or dry throat. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Let's go to Chris in Texas. Good morning, Chris. Welcome to the bright side. Hey, uh, Doctor Ben, you were mentioning McDonald's. <laughs> I remember the last time that I ate at McDonald's was uh, when I lived in Denver for a short time. Yeah. And of course, I made the horrendous mistake of leaving there to come back here to Texas. But now that's uh, all you don't can let eat. That just don't let that discourage you from coming here, though, Ben, because, I mean, flights are cheap. You know, you I, I love Texas. Cheap. Are you in, Where in Texas are you? Well, well, you know, I'm in Austin where Brave New Books was. Oh, of you're, course, you're Chris from Brave no New Books. Brave New Books anymore. No, there's because, no more Brave uh, Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. No more Brave New Books? I think they ran out of money. Oh, my goodness. I love that place. Their, they lost their lease or something. Oh, I'm sad to hear that. I loved Brave New Books. That was a great resource. You know, a lot of these independent, I, I'm, a, I'm a bibliophile. I love books and I love bookstores, especially little independent bookstores. And I, I was very thrilled about when I came to Austin and got to see Brave New Books. I'm very sorry to hear that, Chris from Texas. That's unfortunate. So, no, I do come to no, Austin I, periodically. I do, I, I, yes, I, I mean, by all means, because uh, it's cheap. I, I mean, to fly round trip. Okay, it's also cheap. You know, I notice things are cheaper there than they are in Colorado anyway, in Texas. Um, but tell me about the McDonald's, though. I want to hear, what did you eat? What was the last thing you ate? Okay, well, well, anyway, when I was in Denver back in 2004, and uh, I, was raising, <laughs> I was raising money for the Democratic Party. Uh, for Obama? And, you know, I, I, I'm a recovering 
nope. Democrat. <laughs> I, I, I look. Here's the deal. They're I've been all they're all, all just as life, twisted. Okay? There's you think there. Wait, I, do you think there's a wit's bit of difference as somebody who was in the political field? Is there a big difference between the two brands? And they are brands. There's no big difference. They're, they're still not going to the ind, the individual is going to get screwed either way, no matter what brand right. there, is in power. There's no need to digress on that. Okay, let me move on then, because I know we're running out of time. Yes. Uh, I I got a horrible headache because uh, whatever I ate, some chicken product had MSG in it. Well, okay. of course. Uh, I don't do McDonald's anymore, but uh, I'm just very grateful that I met you just in time because uh, you had that other caller the other day with a heidel hernia, Mm -hmm. uh, 67-year-old guy, and I felt really bad for him. And uh, I'm just glad that I met you at age 47 because, uh, I mean, you know, it's better late than never, but, you know, you have two types of callers. You have those who are proactive and those who are reactive that, uh, you know, the the better late than never people who – I mean, they, they're going to do uh, something about it. They'll do something. Even at age 69, well, well, you could do something. Even at age 69, well, just, you could do something. That, it, it's just that once you get locked into the medical model, you end yeah. up staying there. You can't get out. Yeah. Well, you know, what you're saying, is, that's kind of a life question, a whole way you live your life issue. You know, a lot of us get stuck in old ways of being, and even if they don't work, they're, they're at least comfortable for us. Change is the biggest fear. You know how they always say you got all these different types of fear? You got fear of spiders and fear of, fear of elevators and fear of heights and fear of crowds, and there's all these different fears. But underneath all the fears, there's only one fear, even the fear of death. There's only one fear, and that's the fear of change. That's the ultimate fear. Okay, we well, don't want to change. Well, 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 the topic I was going to discuss with you is things that mimic nutrients. Would that include uh, anatabine citrate, which was the active ingredient in anatablock? You remember the ads, turn back the clock with anatablock? You remember that? No, I don't remember it. I never heard of it. Anatablock? Uh, yeah, the active ingredient is anatabine citrate. It's a component of tobacco. It's an anti-inflammatory, but it's much better than, like, you know, the NSAIDs. And, oh, that was, uh, like, know, from a... They, a couple years ago? Are you talking about a, a, a product that was just out Rock a couple Creek. years ago? It, it was Rock Creek Pharmaceuticals, and it was that big controversy they had with the governor from Virginia, and the FDA ended up uh, taking the product off the shelf. And You, you, know, you know, I know Anatoblock, as I, rem- I, I recall vaguely something called Anatoblock, but I don't, rem- I don't really remember the story, to tell you the truth. Hang on. We'll finish up when we come back from our break, Chris. Hang on. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Chris in Texas about uh, Anna, uh, Anna Block and Anna Bean. I, I vaguely remember Anna in the back. Great. Okay, so what's the deal? What, would, what did you want to know about it? Because I, I can't say I know a lot about it off the top of my head, although I vaguely remember it was a GCN deal, wasn't it? Did that have something to do with GCN? Or not GCN, GNC. GNC. I'm sorry, GNC. Not, uh, GNC, right? The, the vitamin place. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll give you some time to do some research on it. Okay, were well, you going to ask me something? How's that? That'd be good because uh, I don't. I, I, because, I hate to because I I, I, want, I want you to move on to some more callers. So uh, okay, thank good. you so much for your time, though, Doctor Ben. Thanks. Good to talk to you, Chris. Take care, buddy. All right, uh, let's go to John in uh, Kansas. Good morning, John. Welcome to the bright side. Hey, good morning. Hey, what's up? Well, I want to talk about fluoride. Okay. Um, back in 2006, the National Academies of Science. Um, National Research Council published a 450-page book on fluoride toxicity. Okay. And the upshot of that was that the original reason for uh, the Colorado brown stain, of course, was the consumption of calcium fluoride, the mineral. And they found that too much toxicity uh, or too much fluoride was causing the toxicity, but it wasn't the chemical additive that caused the acid rain that you talked about earlier. It I didn't the, I, wait, I didn't talk about acid rain earlier. Well, that's what the but that's the the toxic the main toxic ingredient in the acid rain was fluoride uh, from the fluoride in the bar, the um, aluminum and the fertilizer. Oh, I see. I see. That's so you're saying those original thing. studies that were done, it was done on uh, ass fluoride that was fa- that was coming out in the rain, in, uh, pollute, fluoride that was polluting the water supply through the rain. Is that right? Right. That 
Yeah. I see. Okay, that makes and sense. So, I didn't. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So, um, but in this book, there's a preface written by uh, a doctor who was part of the study, uh, the, the research, and he said that the the original standards for fluoride in the water was set to reduce the amount of natural fluoride in the water, not as a standard to uh, um, allow the chemical introduction of fluoride into the water. It had nothing to do with uh, the powder or the liquid, the acid, the hydro. It was natural fluoride that was like in the soil. Right. Uh. And that's the Colorado brown stain. That's what precipitated this whole thing and got everybody excited about fluoride in the uh, big pharma and big that's chemical. That's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. Uh, that's interesting. We well, it was never really the, shown. Def- it's never been shown definitively. It's never actually been shown definitively that it reduces cavities. Do you know that? I mean, that, that's, the, well, that's the PR part of it, and I'm going to get into that in our PR. next episode, the whole PR. But there's still yeah. controversy about it. What's not controversial, though, John, is that it's, it's a nasty, toxic substance. That's not controversial. It's just the question well, of the I think dose. That's true. Uh, we had Dr. Albert Bergstaller while he was still alive. He's a, a retired chemistry professor at KU come to speak to our our community uh, organization that was trying to keep fluoride from being added to the water in Salina, Kansas. And we didn't succeed in that because the uh, dental cartel in the area right. got together and scared everybody uh, to voting uh, against that process. What, is he, what did the professor say? There is no safe amount of fluoride. That's Zero. pretty much it's pretty much the case. I mean, you can make and, a case. There, it's a nasty, nasty, toxic substance. Now, now, I will say though, John, it is an essential nutrient in the sense that it does have in the trace amounts. It does have some interesting properties, and it has been associated with failure to thrive or failure to grow in deficiency states. But because it's so ubiquitous, it's like you don't need to add it anywhere. It's everywhere. It's the it's That's when you true. start adding it, and also the mining of it, and the emissions. But but the problem is, is that they they produce so much of it. Where are they going to put it? You, you dump it in the ocean, I suppose. But you know, exactly. what else? But it became a, a federal violation, a felony to to have it in the air. So they put the scrubbers on the yeah. stacks. Yeah. Collect and what do they the, do with the scrubbers? They put them in barrels and sold them to cities <laughs> to put it in the water. Great. That's lovely. I'm telling yeah, exactly. you, it's just stuff like this that just gets you so upset, and you can't you can't get angry about it, but you just have to know about it. You know, these corporate well, interests, these these political interests, they do not have the individual's heart, best uh, best interest in mind. They don't. It's just flat out the way it is. And this whole thing, by the way, did did they talk about Edward Bernays? Because we're going to talk about that in a couple of days. How this the whole really? PR. Yeah, it's there's a whole oh, man. It's a whole Edward what Bernays. Man. He rears his he rears his head up in a lot of scandals. Edward we have several of his books at home. We, he's he's not a nice man. No. Do you do you have propaganda? That's a classic. Oh, everybody yeah. Yeah. everybody has. Who? What oh, do you man. do, John? Are you a professional, a health professional of some kind? Um, just longevity distributor. My wife just, and I have been on a, a search for a road for health for years. I was unable to breathe for forty years, and now I've recovered. Um, what would you tell people? To give give the longevity products a plug, just real quick. I got to get some calls, but real quick. All right. Um, Longevity, the 12 bad foods from Dr. Glidden and Dr. Wallach. Uh, you got to understand that what you put in your mouth is killing you if you're on the standard American diet. And uh, the 90 essential nutrients, the, the minerals, the vitamins, the essential fatty acids, the amino acids, the cofactors, the rare earths, that's the building blocks for life. And if you're not doing that, you're killing yourself. Good deal. Thank you, John. Have a great day, buddy. Glad you called. Yeah. All right, man. All right, let's go to Canada and welcome Robert. From Ontario to the bright side. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. I got stiffness in my hands. I don't know if it's... Well, it could be a lot of things. How old are you? 81. Do you know those little hand grip things that you squeeze? Yeah. Get one or get a pair. I used to have really strong hands. I could press two... Start working them out. You got to move that connective tissue. You got to move the muscle in the connective tissue. Otherwise, it will deteriorate. That's step number one. And do it twice a day. When you're done with a hand workout, if you can't do a grips, get some silly putty. Uh, either silly putty or hand grips. If you can't do those, either of those, um, uh, then do something just uh, just kind of cl- open and close your hands real slowly. Uh, when you're done with your workout with your hands, get on your nutritional supplements, especially your ultimate EFAs, your Beyond OsteoFX, and your glucogel caps. Make sure you're doing bone broth protein and make sure you're doing bone broth. You might want to go get yourself some extra high-al uranic acid, H-Y-A-L. 
U R O N I C, high al uronic acid. That. Go ahead. Okay, but it seems like there's not enough blood coming in. Is that well? It could be. That's where the exercise is going to come in. Could oh. very well be at the age of 81. The extremities, the blood supply, you know, that's where the blood supply starts to become diminished as we get older or as disease kicks in, is in the fingers, uh, the hands and feet, fingers and toes, like the extremities. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. But the exercise will restore the blood supply. It'll get connective tissue growing as long as you're doing it within a context of nutrition. So nutrition plus the exercise. That's true for not just your hands, but for your entire body. Uh, and nutrition and exercise as we get older becomes incredibly, incredibly important. What you don't use, you lose. The body will deteriorate if you do not exercise it as well as nutriate it. All right, my it man. Seemed, yeah, it go. seemed to get worse after I took antibiotics one time. Well, yeah, well, because you're not going to absorb your nutrients after you take antibiotics. They mess up your gut. Antibiotics are not a good thing, and we're all getting antibiotics whether we take them or not because if we eat chicken or fish or meat or dairy or drink the tap water, we're getting antibiotics, especially in Canada, which uh, unfortunately lags behind, at least in terms of how much you guys understand how important nutrition and good health is. Unfortunately, you guys really bought into the medical model, and it ain't a good thing. It's not very pretty what's going on with, with health, health and health care in Canada. All right, Robert, does a child, I need, any, does a child yeah. need any vaccines at all? You know, I don't think so. In my opinion, you know, I, 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 I'm very suspicious of vaccines. You want a, the body to build up its own immunity. I, that's a controversial su sub subject. I can only give you my opinion, and I would say I would avoid it personally. The doctor, like told, the doctor told my daughter that the one you get out of dirt and that, you know, the... Uh, yeah, exactly. It, hygiene. could have it. That that's, called, that's called the hygiene hypothesis, and yeah, I, I tend to believe that as well. All right, Robert, I'm gonna, I want to get one more okay. call in, buddy. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless. Have a beautiful day. John in California, you get the last word. What's going on, brother? Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, hey, Trucker John, or Underwear Man. What's going on, Underwear Man? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I just want to let you know, first of all, that I'm not calling to promote myself, my website, my industry. I'm doing it for you. Uh, no, no, I'm no, no. I don't, I, I, okay. I don't need you to do that, but I'm actually, I call because you're my, you're my go-to guy. All right. I appreciate so, that. Well, what I'm calling about today is protein, yeah. uh, whey protein, yeah. whey protein isolate. Looking for a low, uh, low carb protein. I grabbed some grass fed gelatin not too long ago. Got looking at the at the back of it. It's pure zero protein. Zero carbs, zero, 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 everything. Yeah. It's pure very protein. High protein. No, pure. it's essentially it's pure protein. Just, it's collagen. Is that just as good a protein? No, no, okay. no, it's not. It's an important protein, but you're basically just getting collagen. You're getting three or four amino acids. So you're not getting, it's not a full protein, but it's a great support. It's an awesome support okay. protein for building tissue, but it has to be, you have to use it in conjunction with a whole protein, uh, preferably bone broth protein or, or whey protein. But that's all the time I got, John. I'm out of time. Okay. Thank you so much for your call. No Good Thank call. You. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks for the kind it. words. All right, friends. Have yourselves a beautiful, wonderful, awesome, spectacular day. Check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and truthtreatments.com. We will talk to you all later. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.